Good morning for this fifth Sunday in Lent. Uh, for those with us here, you can find everything in your service bulletin. For those with us online, you can follow along in the links in the description for this video. We'll go ahead and get started now with our service for Holy Eucharist. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sons. His mercy is near us forever. We continue now with the College for Purity. <clears throat> Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, and the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. We'll continue now with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who came amongst among the order of unruly wills and the affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest. Desire that which thou dost promise, that so, among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <laughs> first reading is from the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led, he led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied this as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe 
upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied that he had, as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read with me responsibly from Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, O Lord, were to know what is on hands, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness <clears throat> in you, therefore you shall be feared. I will be the Lord, my soul waits for him. And his word of my, soul. my soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait, wait, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Lord, to you, o Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea once again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. You are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, 
For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who have opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, there is already a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. The British Football Club, AFC Richmond, and their owner, Rebecca Welton are struggling when we first see them at the beginning of Ted Lasso. Richmond, while remaining in the Premier League, hasn't had a league championship in quite some time. They're surviving as a team, but they're not thriving. Even its players 
are having a tough go of it. Roy Kent, their captain who is at the end of his career, is struggling. Sam Obisanya, too, is struggling with being far away from his home in Nigeria. And Jamie Tart is nothing but a wannabe star player with no room for his heart for anything else. Rebecca, too, their owner, is recently divorced. And she's consumed with hatred, consumed with hatred for everything her ex-husband did to her. And so she tries to destroy the one thing her ex-husband ever loved, which is the Richmond football team. So to do that, she hires Ted Lasso, an American football coach, an American football coach for a college team who knows nothing about the sport of soccer. Rebecca hires him as an attempt to bring down the Richmond team, to utterly destroy it. Yet something different happens instead. Ted helps breathe new life into the team and into the players as well. He gets Roy to take his job as captain seriously and he even helps Roy find a new career in coaching. Sam goes from underperforming to being one of the best players on the team. Jamie goes from being a jerk to becoming a much better person under Ted's tutelage. And even Rebecca gives up her vendetta against her ex-husband and embraces a new goal of helping bring Richmond back to its glory. Thanks to Ted, the team has new life, new hope, and most of all, newfound belief. God does the same thing for us. God breathes new life into us. God grants us new hope in our belief in him. And all of our readings today point to this new life. We see this first in the book of the prophet Ezekiel. And it's there that the prophet is speaking to the Israelites in their time of exile, their time of exile from their homeland. It's a time of desolation, a time of enslavement, and a time of despair and lack of hope. The impact of this feeling on the Israelites is a state of death. And it's in this, in this state, that Ezekiel is called by God to go and preach to the dry bones, these dry bones representing Israel in exile. Now, the fact that there are dry bones is very important because back in Ezekiel's day, burial practices were very different than they are for us now. We talk about tombs. We're not talking about gravesides. We're not even talking about columbariums. Tombs instead were where you placed a body so it could decompose. So tombs might be used not just by one person, but by an entire family, maybe even beyond families to fellow friends. So your body would lay there, decompose, 
until all there was left was the bones. And those would then get put in a box and placed where they would remain thereafter. So when we're talking about dry bones, we're not talking about people who have just recently died. We're talking about people who have been long dead. And yet, even these long dead bones, God is able to breathe new life into to form new flesh around them. Even these long dead bones, God is able to breathe new life into. And in breathing that new life, he's giving hope for Israel, even in the midst of their exile. We see something similar to in Lazarus today, because it took Jesus so long to go see Lazarus. He isn't just dead. He's been dead for a while. He'd been dead so long that not only had he been laid in a tomb, but there was concern in opening it up that there would be a stench. Because, again, Lazarus was dead. He was surely dead. Even if, by some miracle, he had still been alive when placed in this tomb, he would be dead in that tomb now. Yet Jesus, even in his sorrow over the loss of Lazarus, is able to breathe new life into him. Jesus is restoring Lazarus's life in a way that there can be no doubt that that's what he's doing. No doubt that Jesus is bringing him back to life. And Jesus in doing so is doing this in a way that is completely unique. Unique even in Jesus' own experience of bringing people back to the dead. Because no one that Jesus has raised has been dead as long as Lazarus has been. No one else that Jesus raises in Scripture has actually been dead so long to be laid and wrapped up in a tomb. God, in raising the dead back to life, does the same thing for us as well. Paul tells us that while the way of the flesh is death, the way of the spirit is life. God has granted this spirit to us. His spirit, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And this spirit is God's life giving breath. Because those words are one and the same. The word for breath is the very same word as the word for spirit. This is true for Greek and in Hebrew. So just as God breathed breath and life, into the dry bones of Israel, so too God breathes his Holy Spirit on us. This life that God is giving us does more than just sustain our very being. It increases our substance. It makes us better. The life that God gives is more than just life. It is the forgiveness of our sins. The same forgiveness we spoke of in the psalm this morning.
just as Ted Lasso breathed new life into Richmond, so God breathes new life in us. God restores us in a way that's never been done before, that it wasn't even possible until God did it. The life God provides to us is one that is fuller and better than the one we had before. Now, our readings today are ones of preparation. A reading from Ezekiel is one of the options for readings at the great vigil of Easter. And our reading of Lazarus's being raised from the dead is one of those events that the gospel according to John tells us is one of the very things that led the religious leaders in Jesus's time to want to put him to death. So both these readings are paving the way not just Holy Week, but for our celebration of Easter. And that's exactly what Lent does. It's there to prepare us for the Easter tide. And it's in that celebration of Easter that we remember the life that Jesus gave in order that we might have life too. So today helps prepare us for that moment. Today reminds us that life, true life, life from death even, comes from God and comes from God alone. Service continues in your bulletins or on page 327 in the Book of Common Prayer. And now let us profess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, the God of God, light of light, your very God of your God, begotten not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us and upon his Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, for the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, 
I acknowledge your baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Trey, our priest, as well as Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, and all other denominational leaders, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe our president, Josh our governor, John our mayor, and all our local elected officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance, and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech you of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Alexandra, Isabella, Linda, Tammy, Liz, Shauna, Barbara, Maisie, Christine, Lucille, Rich, Andrew, Fresco family, Tom, Jimmy, Arthur, Laura, Blake, Cameron, Kayla, Millard, Tara, Todd, Lee, Kazen, Bay Young, Joan, Ken, Kay, Scott, Barb, Arlene, Jerry, Michelle, Art, Harriet, Jack, Trudy, Peggy, Glenn, Linda, Jim, JJ, Jennifer, Lauren, Kay, Corey, Ron, Frank, Ginger, Leon, Maria, Brittany, Debbie, Lucas, Logan, Kelly, Kim, Barb, Rose, Anthony, Jimmy, Stephanie, Sharon, Lou, Barb, Doug, Lana, Don, Joyce, Michelle, Bob, Ike, Claire, Stephanie, Jimmy, and Anthony. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Sean, Jane, Elizabeth, Ron, David, Carolyn, Piper, and Karen. We pray for the children, teens, and college students of this parish and for those serving in the military. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish, St. Mark AME Zion Church Newtown and St. Paul's Levittown. Lord, look graciously on thy church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for thy people and equip us for our ministries. We offer up any other prayers at this time, whether aloud or in our hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear, especially Christian martyrs throughout the world, beseeching them to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, her most holy spouse, Luke, our patron, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Taking a moment of silence for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins into all.
Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, and gentle of men, we acknowledge and beware of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, and in sight of our majesty. For what can most stress of thy wrath in the beginning is yet to us, we earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our sins doings. And remember that them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the midst of the life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has granted a remission of our sins and true forgiveness of all our sins in His most holy name, through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now hear the word of God to all who truly turn to Him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Many men sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Now please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We show another sign of peace. And peace to those who are with us online as well. You may be seated here. All the announcements can be found in the back of your bulletin, so uh, please do look at those at your leisure. Main thing to um, highlight, um, we've got another family in need uh, for uh, diapers specifically, so please look at the details for that um, in your bulletin. And that's right around uh, what we're going to be needing very soon, our um, Holy Week and Easter services. So next week we will have this uh, at 8, we'll just be doing the liturgy for the Sunday of the Passion. And we'll have the Palm Sunday and the Sunday of the Passion litur uh, liturgy at 10. So. Uh, please be mindful of that as you choose which service you wish to be at. Uh, next week is also when um, traditionally for us we have our vestry elections. Uh, right now it's looking like we'll just have a slate to fill the four slots uh, that we have open. Uh, and apparently our bylaws are such that those are just ratified by the vestry. Um, so I uh, talked with our vestry about that, um, so we can all be a little more involved in that. But that's probably how that's going to go. Um, we will likely still have um, an election to ratify our nominations for um, delegate and alternate to diocesan convention this fall. So please do come for that. Um, we do have some more details about the vestry election in the back of your uh, bulletins, and we will be letting you know more um, as um, we get things finalized this coming week. Now, uh, as we get ready to move into the communion portion of our service, uh, please know uh, one, we have our offertory plate in the back uh, with our sign-in sheet. So you can, uh, if you haven't signed in yet, uh, you can do that and place your offering in the back as well. For those with us online, uh, there is an online giving option through Tidely, uh, and you can find that link on just about every social media uh, online format that we have. <laughs> 
Um, uh, as another note, uh, as we move into communion, uh, please know all baptized Christians are warmly invited to receive. If there's any reason you wish not to receive, simply cross your arms. That'll be a sign to me that you'd like a blessing instead. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice. Our service now continues in your bulletins or on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. With the Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Who doth bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the paschal feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the people in heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praise in thee and sing. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, from his side. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, the Son of God. O glory be to thee, Almighty God, our heavenly Father. For that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of us, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. This is often as you shall drink, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty. With these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, which safe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. We earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Let us humbly beseech you need to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all of our whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, our souls, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseech you thee that we and all others shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we. Although we are worthy through a manifold sense to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By thee and with thee, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty. World without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover once for all is sacrificed for us. And it will let us keep the peace. The Lamb of God that takes it's away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. We do not presume to come to this side of the table, Lord, 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 trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy will, Lord, great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up crumbs of thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is all for us have mercy. Grant us, therefore, grace, Lord, so that we can fill us from thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Blood 
Lord Christ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our service now continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee, for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to hope with Thy last kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.